Hello, my name is Jukka, and uh, this time I'm doing something a bit different. Uh, the Spanish Masters of the Universe history book. And this will be a sort of a look through the pages and uh, review of sorts. Some of the dialogue will be going over the general aspects of it, so not everything will match the pages that will be shown on the screen. Uh, sorry for any slower moments where I don't have something to fill the void. And mostly I'm sorry for names I will butcher during this video. So let's start off with that. Big thanks to Daniel Ramon Abril for helping me acquire this book. Big thanks to Mila for helping with the camera setting. And as always, Adam from Battle Ramp Log. This was not a sponsored video, though I pleaded with him and he said no. So, let's start off with the book. This is a fan book done by Masters of the Universe fans from Spain, and they wanted to cover their own personal memories about the history and the brand, and they did a lot of research uh, for the book with interviews with uh, artists and people behind the scenes and other key personnel. This um, book came with the art print by Rafael Lopez Espi, which is really awesome looking, I must say. I love it. And the name is Yo Tengo el Poder, La Historia de los Masters del Universo en España. So roughly, I have the power, the history of Masters of the Universe in Spain, with prologue by Mark Taylor. Nice fellow, I've met him once. The volume 1 covers uh, years from 1984 to 1986, and it starts off with history on metal in general and the partnership with Kongost, the company who helped produce the toys in Spain. There's the prototypes and He-Man collection and uh, Michael Halperin series bible, the information and images that would be used, and from Filmation series guide as well, which you'll see later. Um, the whole book is just glossy paper, <laughs> full-on color goodness, uh, 364 pages, and it goes by in a yearly chronological fashion. So you get uh, everything from the merchandise to board games and cartoon VHS and just more. And they start off with year 1984 and information in Spain overall and the toy line itself. Here's the catalog that had uh, some unique photos done by Spanish people that you can't find anywhere else. They're very awesome looking with the diorama settings. And collection in 1984, the first series. And there you can see the photographs are very uh, professionally made with white backgrounds and the accessories and what series they belong and the name and production codes whenever available, uh, how they looked on the cards themselves. It's a um, broad strokes look. Uh, had they apparently done a more um, introspective book about all the possible variants that there are, then that would have been a totally different, much, much larger book. But this is a great uh, overview of the series and the brand and merchandise and all the box art images, as you can see here. Some of them were done uniquely for um, Spanish audiences, which you'll see later. Uh, they were done by, uh, again, Rafael Lopez Espi. Uh, he worked on oils and he actually didn't have the actual artworks themselves, but 
because they didn't get them on time as I understood, but he was given the toy boxes and he then recreated some of the artwork pretty magnificently and there are unique differences in the packaging but they still look like they came from the original ones that were in the US market. Here's interview with him and the cardboard images of He-Man and Skeletor, which just loving these. And information on merchandising and comics, illustrators, writers. Then uh, there's the cartoons that were dubbed and episode name translations voice actors and here we have also the VHS cover artworks which are really something on their own <laughs> and they have many documents never before seen images from the toy line some concept uh, art uh, sketches and even patent documents that will come about as you can see here catalog images The collection 1985. Again, just a very comprehensive researched book. I personally don't speak the language, but I'm using a translator on some of these. And here you can see Road Ripper and Rotan. The images, they, it's really awesome look at the differences but then at the same time some of the similarities that were uh, present on the art. The mini comic series and card back illustrations done by Errol McCarthy. Marketing on the 1985, and they they had many licensed parts from the um, games and some toy uh, aisle uh, dioramas and many many McDonald's, um, PepsiCo, and just. I wish some of these had come here, but <laughs> the license style guide images used in the merchandising and promotional material. They had wrist watches and just kites, and here are some puzzle uh, box images where you could make the puzzle into different images and these are really funky with the colors and <laughs> some games that they had the booklets from Super Golden Adventures and 85 Filmation episode, some tape. The cover arts, they are very much in the spirit of the episodes that are in them, but it's still very unique that I just, <laughs> they, they look a bit campy, but I, I love them. go. 
going to the 1986. Internal documents, I believe. And patent images and some title and variations. The collection of the figures from nineteen eighty six accessories and Illustrations. And promotional two pack. Battle Bones also had some unique art. And the mini comic series three. Then we move on to marketing. Apparently also there was a whole lot of demand so that there was a um, factory built or used in France that helped uh, meet some of the demands in the market for toys. Here's PepsiCo and the mini filmation style guide images used and they have these mini figures which look very neat and costumes and backpacks and just watches and pencil cases and just a whole lot of stuff. The Panini sticker album. And once again the filmation cover art. Each very memorable. They're not on, always on model, but you will recognize what episodes would be on them. And the epilogue and credits. And that was it. It's an awesome book, and um, go check out the links for Yo Tengo el Poder. Uh, the book is by the Force books, and they currently still have order time until the end of March 2020, so you can get a copy. Uh, they did a previous run around uh, last year, but now they have a second window, so hopefully you can still get a copy for yourself. Just you can contact them through the website and for any international shipping, and just if you're in <laughs> to Masters of the Universe and just 
information about the toys and especially the Spanish uh, history. It's a very fascinating topic, so check it out. And they also have a volume two apparently that they're planning. So hopefully we'll get more information when that'll come out this uh, year. Hopefully should see also a book from Mark Taylor himself. So and the two Dark Horse books. So there's a lot of Masters of the Universe goodness <laughs> coming. I hope you enjoyed this video and what you thought about it. And if you have the book or plan on getting it, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when new updates are coming. I'm trying to raise the subscriber count and my name is Yukka and I wish you good journey.